Fellas, this seems like Sunday. It is Sunday. You see, Andy, we is on the radio now every Sunday on CBS for Rinso. That's right. Rinso, the new Rinso with Solium, brings you the Amos and Andy Show. <laughs> The soap that contains solium, the sunlight ingredient, brings you a full half hour of entertainment with Lou Lubin, Eddie Green, Jeff Alexander's orchestra and chorus, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. <laughs> and now, Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy Amos and Andy. Well, as the fall season rolls around once again, let us look in on the home of the kingfish and his wife, Sapphire Stevens. The time is noon. The kingfish has just come home for lunch to find Sapphire packing her bag. Sapphire, what you doing stuffing your clothes in the suitcase there? I'm taking a little trip to Chicago to visit Mama. You know, George, I ain't seen her for almost five years. I wonder what she looks like now. Yeah, well, don't get your hopes too high, Sapphire. Once you look like a walrus, you always look like a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so anxious to see her. She written that she's got a job working in a florist shop, and it makes her so happy to be surrounded by flowers. Yeah, you know, it'd make me happy to see her that way myself. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. I don't want to hear another word about it. Now, listen here, George. There's something you just got to do for me while I'm gone. Now, what's that? There's an old school chum of mine getting in town tomorrow from Georgia by the name of Lula Mae Simpson. Her husband passed on last year, and she's coming up here to look around for another husband, and we've got to help her. Yeah, well, what you want me to do, buddy? I want you to introduce her to some nice, edible bachelor. <laughs> but none of them bums over at that large hall. Yeah, what does this uh, Lula Mae look like? Well, she happens to weigh 225 pounds. But she's got a real sweet face. See, here's a picture of it she sent me with the letter. And we just got to find her a husband. Let me see the picture. Here it is. Holy mackerel. Compared to her, a hippopotamus is a delicate creature. <laughs> George, we got to get my girlfriend a husband. Yeah, well, I ain't going to introduce her to nobody. Well, if you don't, then I ain't going, and I'll have Mama visit us. Visit us? Sweet Audrey has done blackmail me into it. All right. <laughs> Well, Henry Van Porter, come in. I ain't seen you for months. Oh, charming to see you, Kingfish. Yeah, tell me, Henry, did you have a nice summer? Oh, yes, we had a long motor trip. We went from here out to California to see that place where they have the big redwoods, Joe Cemetery Park. Well... <laughs> and then we panhandled through Texas and ended up at White Sulfuric Springs. <laughs> well, sounds like you had quite a trip there, son. Oh, yes. How about you, Kingfish? Did you escape the heat of the city this summer? Oh, uh, yeah, me and my wife, Sapphire. I went up on the roof a couple of times, squirted a hose on each other. Mm. <laughs> Sapphire is taking a little trip now, though. She left yesterday for her mother's, thank goodness. Yeah, well, you should be all smiles. Yeah, but I got a tough job, Henry. Uh, Sapphire's got a girlfriend that gets in town today that uh, wants to get married. And Sapphire wants me to introduce her to some legible bachelor, you mm-hmm. see. It's a gal built like an elephant by the name of uh, Lula Mae Simpson. Just come up from Georgia. Lula Mae Simpson? Wait a minute. Wait a minute here. There's an item in the society column about her in today's newspaper. In the society column? Yes, and it says she was left a $20,000 estate by her late husband, and she's planning to spend the entire winter in our city. $20,000? You know, Henry, if I could find some guy to marry her, I could collect a marriage broker's fee. I'd be on either street. I wonder who I could get. Well, I ain't got the faintest idea. But I had just seen him walking toward the pool room. <laughs> so Andy's at the pool hall, huh? Yes, you know, Kingfish, maybe this scheme of yours will work. If you get them together, maybe Dan Cupid will hit Andy with the arrow. Yeah, well, if you don't hit Andy, he certainly can't miss Lula me, I tell you that. <laughs> Now, when Andy come into office here, if I can just make him think that I was a marriage broker, maybe I can stick him with that fat gal, Lula May, and that way get a credit of 20000 Oh, oh, here you come now. I'll get on the telephone here. Hi there, Kingfish. What you doing? Uh, I was a marriage broker, Andy, with clients all over the world. There's a big shortage of women. Right now, I was waiting for a long-distance call from Australia. Australia? Now, uh, wait a minute. Here I come now. Uh, hello? Uh, who is 
is this, Australia? Oh, hello, Ozzy. <laughs> What's the trouble? Oh, you say you was at the church waiting to get married and you can't find a wife, huh? Well, that's too bad. I see. Yeah, well, my advice is to grab the first good-looking kangaroo that comes along. <laughs> yeah, what are you all spoken for, huh? Oh, this shortage is really worldwide. Sorry, I can't help you. Well, goodbye. Happy boomerang to you and all that stuff. See you later. Goodbye. Say, <laughs> Kingfish, uh, what is this word, worldwide thing you're talking about? Uh, Andy, it's a shortage of women. You know, of course, that there's a shortage of women. I'll say. The one I took out last night only came up to my belt buckle. <laughs> no, no, Andy. I mean that there ain't enough women to go around. Ain't you heard about it? No, the drought ain't hit me yet. I was just thinking the other night, on the basis of smooching, this has been my best year since 1941. Oh, no, no, there's a shortage, and a uh, matter of fact, statistics prove that within the next ten years, if the shortage of women keeps up, one out of five babies will be born without a mother. <laughs> what, what is they doing about the situation? Well, uh, with the shortage in this part of the country... We has got to bring women from another part of the country where they got a longage, you see. Oh, yeah. Oh, the situation is bad, Andy. Yeah, well, maybe I ought to do something about this shortage of women. Yeah, you're right. Now, you as my pal, maybe I can help you. Let me look at my list here. Yeah. Wait a minute. Here we are. I got it. Holy Moses, you was in luck. There's one that's just been imported from Georgia that's worth $20,000 in cash. $20,000? Sounds like she's a lovely woman. I'll take her. What she look like? <laughs> Uh, her name is Lula Mae Simpson. Or maybe I got a picture of her here. Yeah, here she is right here. Look at that. Wow. The way she's puffed out there, she must have that $20,000 around her waist and a $1 bill. She's <laughs> uh, a little fat in this picture, Andy, but the photographer took what's called a double exposure, you see. Uh, but I tell you, Andy, for $20,000, you can forget a little blubber, you know. <laughs> Oh, Kingfish, I couldn't even get my arms around her waist. Yes, you can if you time it right. Just watch your breathing and catch on the inhale. That's all. <laughs> she got $20,000, huh? Yeah. Where does she make all that money at? Rafflin? <laughs> oh, no. Well, she's a mighty big woman. And look here, you just judging by the surface. Underneath that fat, she's probably very skinny. Yeah. That's right, you know, and that $20,000 has put me on easy street. Well, too. now, look here. You don't get the whole 20 now. Wait a minute. You see, there's a marriage broker fee of 50%. You got to split that money with me, you see. 50%? Ain't that a lot? No, no, no. Well, don't forget, I'm going uh, to help you now uh, split the expenses of the courtship with us. Oh. The cost of the engagement ring and all that stuff. Yeah, but how come you're taking 50%? Oh, that's the fee set by the government, and on all marriages where the broker arranges the marriage before the groom ever sees the bride. Oh, that's in the Constitution. That's what they call the pig in the poker girl. Well, okay, it's a deal. I'll give you 50%. You think this thing is going to work out good for me, King of Oh, Andy, with all that dough, you'll be going around saying... I is in the money. And it's going to be a great... Now lift up your hands and jump. There's going to be a great day. Hallelujah, brother. Angels in the sky. Promise that by and by. There's going to be a great day. Hallelujah. Gabriel will warn you. Don't come on, Lord. 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 Don
This is your old friend, John Lake, and I must say it's mighty nice to be back talking to you. Especially about wonderful new Rinso with Soli. You know, every time I saw a Rinso wash last summer, with all those white clothes whiter than new and gay washable colors even brighter than new, I said to myself, John, you're not going to be really happy until you're back on the air telling people about new Rinso. Now, only new Rinso can do this amazing thing. White clothes actually come whiter than new, and washable colors brighter. I think that's really something. Matter of fact, today's Rinso is so different from ordinary soaps, you can even dry clothes indoors on a rainy day, and they'll turn out swell. Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. Now, this sounds marvelous. But if you've ever tried new Rinso, you know it's absolutely true. Wonderful, safe, soapy, rich new Rinso with Solium. More women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Hello, Dan. What you doing standing outside of Shorty's Barbershop? Hello, Amos. I'm waiting for the kingfish. Did you hear the big news about me? About you? No, I ain't in there. What's happened to you? I'm going to get an uptilator. Uh, <laughs> you going to get... What's that? Wait a minute. I, I, that got me a little there. What you going to get? Uh... Well, to an ignorant fellow like you, that means I'm going to get married. In other words, Amos, I'm going to enter into holy deadlock. <laughs> So why is this happening all of a sudden? Listen, Amos, in ten years, there are going to be five babies born to every short mother. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't exactly understand what you're talking about, Andy. Who is you marrying? Well, she just got to town from Georgia in a pope. She's a pig. <laughs> well, I have my constitutional rights, all right. Yeah, I don't understand this, Andy. Well, don't worry, Amos. I was getting $20,000 worth of blubber. Yeah. Here comes the kingfish now. I'll see you later. Yeah, well, drop over to the house sometime after you have your head with them. So long. Yeah, I'll do that. So long. Hi, kingfish. Well, hello there. And I say, listen, you didn't tell Amos too much, did you? Oh, he's so ignorant, he don't know what I'm talking about no way. Well, come on. Let's get on in the barbershop here and see Shorty. Hi, Shorty. Oh, well, there's my pal. How is you? Well, I'll be doggone. Look who... Uh, what's cooking? Are you... I'm... 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 Hi, fellow. <laughs> Hey, uh, Shorty, tell me this. Did you have a nice summer? Oh, yeah, a great time, fellas. I, I spent my vacation last summer on a farm. And, I, and yeah, that's why I wouldn't lose my touch as a barber. I, I, I kept in practice by shaving the goats around the place. By uh, shaving the goats? Yeah, I'd lather up the goats, snap my razor, and shave them as clean as a whistle. I, 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 I must have shaved a, a three dozen goats. Yeah, well, did all the practice help you out now that you're back in the barber shop? I don't know. I ain't had a goat to come in yet. <laughs> oh, wait a minute now. Look here, Shorty. Look here. Uh, we're going to let you in on a secret. Yeah. I'm going to marry a rich woman with $20,000. Well, congratulations. Yeah, and I want you to give Andrew a good haircut and a shave here. He's going over and meet her for the first time. Oh, sure. I- I'll fix him up. And by the way, Andy, uh, you-, you-, you don't want to let her think that you you, you- got for her money. Right. So tell her that you're a rich man, too. Say, hey, Andy, that's a good idea. We'll put on the dog with her. Tell her you was a Texas millionaire. Yeah. You-, you know something, fellas? I-, I was caught in a gal once, and I didn't know how to make an impression on her. A friend of mine told me to court her with music. Music, huh? Well, uh, well what'd well, you do? Yeah. Well, I, I didn't just like them romantic tuba doors of old. I, I got me a guitar and I ser- serenaded her onto her, her balcony. I stood out there in the moonlight and with my beautiful voice, I sang, Oh, so love me, I. Hey, that's great, Shorty. What did the gal say? Oh, she, she said, she said, Shorty, that's, that's the most beautiful music. You, you got the sweetest voice I have. I, I, I could listen to you sing it for you. You, you, you got to be, you got to stop the music. Well, uh, Andy, here is Lula May's apartment. Now, remember, you is a wealthy, retired oil man from Texas, and you ain't interested in money. Yeah, well, I'll put on the dog, all right. Okay, I'll knock on the door here. You know, Kingfish, I'd feel better about this whole thing if that Lula May wasn't so fat. Well, Andy, Lula May's size might be in your favor. Remember, the bigger it is, boy, the harder it falls. And besides... Hey, Kingfish, hey, the building is shaking. Must be an earthquake. <laughs> Wait a minute, that Lula May coming to the door. Wait a minute. Uh, Why, Mr. Stevens, do come in. Oh, 
come in. Why, thank you, Mrs. Simpson. Thank you. Uh, come on in, then. Uh, if you think there's room enough in there for the three of you. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Simpson, uh, may I present you with Longhorn Brown? <laughs> He is the retired multimillionaire from Texas. Uh, he's the fellow in the society columns refers to as Filthy Rich Brown. Well, this is indeed a pleasure, Mr. Brown. I've never met a genuine Texan before. Uh, likewise. Uh, really? <laughs> you know, Mr. Brown, I just got here from Georgia. And New York is so huge, it makes me feel positively tiny. Mm, yeah, that's quite a trick, all right. <laughs> Stevens told me on the phone this morning that on your property down in Texas, you had a lot of cattle and oil. Oh, yeah. There was so much oil on the place, the cattle had to wear skid chains. <laughs> well, I guess you can make a lot of money in the oil and cattle business. Oh, yeah. Not only the uh, oil and cattle business, but uh, he's got uh, millions of other things, too. Now, let's see. Uh, you made a lot of money in... Uh, in lumber, too, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I sure did. They discovered trees on my property. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that Texas is really some state, all right. Oh, you Texans always stand up for Texas. Yeah, well, if you was in the saddle 12 hours a day, you'd be glad to stand up for anything. <laughs> uh, uh, by the way, Longhorn, uh, uh, what was that generous thing you done the other day to show that you don't care nothing about money? Oh, you mean last Thursday when I give away the Grand Canyon? Yeah, yeah, that's the one I meant, uh, I like I told you, Miss Simpson, Miss Brown is in New York for the social season. You know, parties, theaters, going to the opera and symphonies. Oh, then you're interested in music? Oh, yes, yes. Mr. Brown is always slapping up that culture stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, tell me, what is your taste in symphonies? Mm, I don't know. I ain't never tasted none. <laughs> well, I forgot to tell you, Mr. Brown, uh, your travel agent called this morning and wanted to know if you was going to Europe on the Queen Mary or the Queen Elizabeth. Oh, yeah, well, did you take care of it? Yeah, I told him to buy both. Hope you'd make up your mind when he got down to the pier. Oh, you're planning a trip to Europe? Oh, yeah, he visits the Riviera every year. You see, Mr. Brown here's got a chateau over there. Yeah, next year I'm going to build a house on it, too. <laughs> You're one of the most charming men I ever met. Yeah. I do hope I'll see you again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you will, Lord Miss Simpson. After all, I don't think Miss Brown would hold it against you just because you only got $20,000. Oh, no. I have always wanted to get to know the poor people's better. Yeah. Well, uh, we must be leaving. Goodbye, Miss Simpson. Uh, millionaire Brown here has got to get back to his office at the stock market. Uh, by the way, Brown, uh, how's the ticket today? Well, I was a little worried at first, but the doctor found out it was just gas. <laughs> well, uh, so long, Miss Simpson. So long. Uh, 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 wait a minute, uh, Miss Brown, uh, there was something you wanted to ask, Mrs. Simpson. There was? Yeah, remember you were telling me how delightful it would be if you and her had supper together this evening? Oh, that would be lovely, Mr. Brown. Yeah, well, don't cook nothing special. I'll just take pot luck. <laughs> well, good morning. Come in, Brother Andy. Hi, Kingsley. Well, I ain't seen you for about five days, lover boy. Uh, we has got that rich widow in the bag, ain't we, son? Wait a minute, Kingsley. Wait a minute. I ain't told you what done happened last night. Holy mackerel, now wait a minute. I don't like the looks on your face, then. Don't tell me that you done put the skids under all that money we're getting. Well, you know, Kingfish, I've been courting Lula May in the daytime and kissing all my other gals goodbye at night. Mm, yeah, natural, just like any other honest man would do. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, last night I took a cute little gal to the movies. Yeah? I wanted to get in some last-minute scooching before I married Lula May and the dry spells at them. <laughs> anyway, we were sitting there smooching and... When the lights went on, somebody started beating me over the head with an umbrella. I looked around, and it was Lula May sitting right behind me. I can see her since. And uh, why did you do a thing like that? I have done pawned my furniture to raise $250, brought you that diamond engagement ring for you to give her, or we is in a mess. We got to get a hold of Stonewall, the lawyer, right away. We'll get... <laughs> You know, I traveled around some last summer, and everywhere I went, I made it a point to ask housewives how they liked new Rinso with sodium. Well, every time I so much as mentioned Rinso, I was overwhelmed with enthusiasm. You'd think the women were selling Rinso, not I. 
Rinseau with Solium, they said, actually gets white clothes whiter than new. And washable colors brighter than new. Even on rainy days, even when your wash must be dried indoors, you get a brighter wash. New Rinseau gives your wash a brilliance you've never known before. Now, it's because today's Rinseau contains Solium, the scientific sunlight ingredient. And only Rinseau has it. New Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. I think you'd better find out for yourself about wonderful new Rinso. I think you'd better see for yourself right away how Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. Do that, won't you? Well, Stone Water Lawyer, come in. Yeah, I'm sorry I was late, boys. I've been in court today defending a woman client. Yeah, what happened? Well, some woman called me up and asked me if I would defend her in court, you know, give her some tips on how to beat the case. Oh, uh-huh, yeah, go ahead, sir. I told her I couldn't get there till the last minute, but I'd give her some advice on the phone and told her how to act going up to the witness stand. Yeah. Uh-huh. I told her, roll eyes at the jury and smile and wink at the judge. Wear a form-fitting satin dress with the sheer nylon hose. Yeah, yeah. how'd she come out? Uh, she lost the case. I didn't know she was 93 years old. Oh. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute, Jeff Stonewall. Look here. Uh, uh, we has got a problem, too, you know. You see, I'm going to tell you a secret here now, and, and we need some advice on it. You see, Andy is engaged to a wealthy widow, and last night, she caught him smooching in a moving picture show with another gal. She was sitting right behind him, and is sitting there with another gal right up in front of her, smooching there, and now she won't even talk to him. Yeah, and the funny thing is, she's worth 20,000 bucks. Who talks to you, huh? Not a word. <laughs> yeah, why, why, why don't you play on a sympathy? You know, let me tell you, I saw a moving picture once where a fella had a fight with his gal, and he went off and joined the French Foreign Legion. And when his gal heard about it, she was so brokenhearted, she forgave him for everything. Hmm. Hey, Andy, that is it. We'll get Lula May to think that you was in the French Foreign Legion. I got an old large uniform at home. We'll fix it up a little, and then when you walked in with it on you... You throw us around a little French, you know, you say, Viva la France and Sailor Gear and all that stuff. You, you know that? Yeah, that's good. You'll get Lula May over to Lodge Hall, Kingfish. And I'll come in all dressed up like a French soldier. Well, Stonewall, you is really a pal. Don't forget to send us a bill for this. Ah, I wish all my clients would like you, yeah. You know, I had one client I worked like a dog to get him off on a murder charge. I give him the advantage of all of my legal experience. He was so ungratefully. Didn't even pay the bill I sent him. You mean defended him in a murder charge? Well, you know, maybe he didn't, uh, the bill didn't even reach him. Oh, he got it all right. I even got proof he was carrying the bill in his pocket. Well, how could you tell? This morning it come back from Sing Sing all scorched round the edges. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now, Lula me, just calm down. Will you please just calm down? I asked you to come over to my office here to tell you that Andy is brokenhearted, and he has done joined up with the French Foreign Legion. He's even wearing a uniform. The French Foreign Legion? Why, well, I can hardly believe it. Yeah. That sounds like the French Foreign Legion knock now. Wait a minute. Come in. <laughs> Why, Andy. Excuse me, folks. Did you see any Arabs go through here? <laughs> Uniform. You really joined the French Foreign Legion? Yes, I. Vivian La France and sailors in gear. Yeah. <laughs> and are you really going overseas? Yes, sir. I'm going over with the first ship of the Legionites. And I have joined the most dangerous branch of the French Foreign Legion, the branch that carries the guns. <laughs> oh, Andy. It sounds like I'll never see you again. Yeah, that's right, Lula May. Nobody that ever joins the Legion ever comes back. Yeah, the fact is, they are so sure that you are, you get knocked off that they send you into battle with a coffin strap right on your back. That's what they do. Oh, you mean there's no hope of me ever seeing you again? I don't think so. You see, Lula May, the foreign Legion is the toughest outfit in the world. If you live long enough to get a discharge, they shoot you as a coward. That's yeah. what they do. <laughs> 
That's right. The only way to save your own life is to commit suicide. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is very sad, Lula May, and all this happened just because you broke his heart. Well, I'd like to hear an explanation of why he was out with another girl. Yeah, I'd like to hear that myself. Uh, <laughs> well, now, uh, wait a minute, uh, Lula May, we can explain that. Uh, you see, uh, that other gal that uh, you feed him with... Uh, in the moving picture show, uh, 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 that was, uh, Andy's sister. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, come to think of it, that was my sister, all right. Your sister? Well, why were you taking her to the movie? Uh, well, now, you see, Andy's brother-in-law was out of town, and Andy was sort of taking his place and doing what he would do. Yes, but why were you kissing her? Uh, well, uh, you see, uh... Andy can't help it if his brother-in-law is a little affectionate, you know. He can't help that. Yeah, but Andy, if this is true, why didn't you explain it last night? Well, it's pretty hard to talk when somebody's beating you over the head with an umbrella. <laughs> well, Andy, dear, I've decided to forgive you. Oh, this is great. Look here, honey. I done bought you your engagement ring. Here you is. Oh, Andy, this is wonderful. Oh, that's a real diamond there. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, Andy, little old me. You're just crazy about little old you. <laughs> little old me is just crazy about big fat you. <laughs> well, folks, everything is all set for the wedding. Yeah, stop by the telegraph office and wire the foreign legion not to count on me this time. Don't worry, my love birds. I'll send the street telegram direct to General de Gaulstone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Andy, it took us just about a week to put over this whole thing. Tomorrow you marry the rich widow. And just to think, we get 20,000 smackers. Yeah, but this courtship has done cost me money, you know it. Yeah, well, don't forget, I put up $250 of it, and I want my half of that $20,000 in fact. Yeah. Well, Sapphire, when did you get back in town? Hello, George, dear. Hello, Andy. Hi. I got in about two hours ago. Well, Sapphire, I've got a big surprise for you. Some wonderful news. Your friend Lula May is getting married tomorrow. Why, George, that's wonderful. Oh, I must go call her up. Oh, and before I tell you about the groom, I just want to say that it was a lucky thing that that society column told about her inheriting $20,000 from her first husband. Oh, I'm so glad. I told her to put that in the paper so she could hook a rich husband. She ain't got a nickel. Oh, 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 oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunday night is a new night for us on the radio. If you have an opportunity, we would appreciate you telling your friends of this new time each Sunday night for the Amos and Andy Show on the Columbia Broadcasting System. And we'd appreciate one more thing, folks, and that's when you go to your grocery store. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we would greatly appreciate you buying Rinso, the new Rinso with Solium. You will be surprised and delighted at the new Rinso. Thank you, and good night, folks. See you next Sunday. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company, the makers of New Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Until then, good night to all of you from all of us. Amazing? Yes, but doctors have proved it. Life Boy Health Soap in your daily bath gets skin cleaner. Stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Get Life Boy right away. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy Show at the same time next Sunday. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.